I think it's very important for Tom, as an actor, to not make this a movie in which you see Ethan Hunt in a different story. He really wanted to create a very different character, and this speaks to what he's done in this movie particularly. I feel it to be a deep and interesting performance. He wanted this franchise to be different in every way. We always want to stay true to Jack Reacher, and one of the sort of untouchable traits is there isn't a tremendous amount of introspection or um, character searching that Reacher does. Lee created the character specifically to be a man of action, not a man of tremendous internal world. But in this movie, now that we've introduced the character, we're able to explore more about what makes him tick. And Reacher's own feelings about his life, his destiny, the kind of life that he hasn't had as represented in this movie by Samantha, the kind of love life and possible relationship that he's really never had, which he sees in a woman like Turner. And we're able to do all that now that we firmly set the character up in a franchise. Want, but straight into it. Great. Okay. Okay. And how's the chin here in this? In this. Okay. Is this, yeah, is this really good? I'm watching you. That's why I'm having okay, to keep great. head up. Head up here. I'm texting. Oh, yeah, we'll go one more time. And action. Major Turner, please. One moment, please. This is Turner. Major S. Turner. The thing about Reacher that very few people get, and which is what I really think is great about the interplay between Tom Cruise and Kobe Smulders, is Reacher is a guy profoundly happy with solitude, but worried about being lonely. He is a lonely guy. And therefore, if he gets the chance to this random hook up this random opportunity, he's going to take it. Not just because he fancies having dinner with a good-looking woman. He is always trying to make a connection. And of course, most of the time it doesn't work, but the instinct is still there. When are you coming to DC? I'll get there eventually. Well, then I, I won't hold my breath. What pulls Reacher back in is he was just interested in her. He likes the sound of her voice. Reacher is a character, when you read his books, he likes strong women. Kobe Smulders is uh, perfectly cast for this, someone who is, has, you know, the intelligence and the beauty and the power on screen. You know, when you see her, I believe that she's in the military. You believe she has that kind of intelligence and that type of charm. I thought she was absolutely perfectly cast for it. This is insane. Does this mean dinner's off? It was really cool. It was my first experience doing a movie that had a book uh, where you could go to for so much of the character's backstory and to read how these two characters related to each other. Working with Tom has truly been amazing. He's such a great performer, but he knows stories and he knows films so well. He is literally like a walking film encyclopedia. And also this is his second time playing this character, so he knows Reacher so well that it's been just incredibly helpful and it's also been a lot of fun. The chemistry with Tom and Kobe is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. They're both amazing at what they do, but there is a real chemistry there. It's not just on the screen, it's off the screen too. It's genuine. They joke with each other, they laugh, they giggle, they help each other, they collaborate with each other. The relationship between Reacher and Turner is fun, and there's a lot to explore there. But I would say the heart and soul of the movie is really Reacher and Samantha. Ready and roll sound. Speed. Mark. Here you're always thinking of that character as the artful dodger. You know, that's what Ed and I talked about. It was like, she's the artful dodger. And someone who can steal, who's very clever, uh, street smart, yet she has a kindness. It's my first day filming with Tom. I'm really excited. But I mean, I've been rehearsing with him and it's gone really well. He's super cool and a lot of fun. So it's, I'm not really nervous about this being my first day of filming, because I know it's gonna go well. Yeah, but I'm excited. I don't know what I'm say. <laughs> Ready? Background? And camera? Danica blew us away at her audition because there's 
a restlessness about her. She brings a sense of humor, but she also brings a sense of indignance, of anger at her situation in the world, of resentment, everything that any of us who have teenagers will recognize uh, uh, pretty clearly. And she'll break your heart. So anyway, I'm just thinking that shot, this shot should be, as she's sort of walking out, we sort of counter and just follow her right through there. And what I want, you know, because we're going to do two sizes of Tom, this is the moment when he's really, for the first time, really getting to look at her, seeing her, okay? We loved writing Samantha. First of all, the idea, of course, is that he doesn't know if Samantha is his daughter or not. So what you're playing on is he's looking at her. Even if you don't see it in the scenes, you just know that character is looking at her going, is that my daughter? And so what does that mean? He's looking at her behavior. It's like early in the film, she busts him. He's following her. He's pretty good at following people. She figures out that he's following her. It's like she has a natural ability to lose herself, to, to handle situations. You know, this is part of playing on, well, is she the daughter or is she not the daughter? Because she's a really capable young person. If you're looking for my mom, I don't live with her. Who do you live with? I read the novel, Never Go Back, and of course about halfway through it, I was like, there's, there's no hunter, where's my character? Because the, the, the hunter was created, uh, the character for this film. What we didn't have in the first movie is we didn't have a singular villain that the audience looks at and thinks, this guy could be Jack Reacher, or this guy is as smart as Jack Reacher. It was sort of bifurcated between Werner Herzog and Jai Courtney. And in this movie, we wanted to have Jack Reacher meet his match. Attorney-client privilege goes back to the earliest days of English common law. It means a major Turner told you in confidence a great deal about what she learned from her investigation in Afghanistan. You know, and each movie's different. Each story needs a different kind of opponent. You want part of drama is you need, you know, that counter intention. You need the obstacles. And the bigger the obstacles, the more powerful the story is. Ed said, man, you got to look at this actor. He's got great power. And what he did in terms of playing that character, he's just, you know, it's just so weirdly off center. We talked for 10 minutes. 10 minutes is a very long time, as you were about to learn. Mm -hmm. Patrick is physically really capable, he's great looking, he's articulate, he's younger than Tom, which I think sets up an interesting dynamic too, that here's this younger guy coming after him, and I'm always drawn to trained actors, I am, you know, and he's, he comes out of Juilliard, he can do classical theater, and the idea that he brings that into a, a role of a, of a villain is, is just a great, you know, opportunity. Now you're gonna tell me what's going on. But well, the first chance I get, I'm gonna scream or grab a policeman. We really play with the metaphor of the kind of family road movie. The idea that these three people are the least likely people ever to form this little immediate surrogate family. And yet they're forced to as they go on the road to try to solve this. I feel sick. Put your head out the window. The relationship between Reacher and who he thinks is his daughter, Samantha, you know, you're throwing a child into the equation. And not only just a child, but a child that he didn't know about and now is sort of beginning to become an adult herself. It's just an entirely new relationship for him to try to figure out. How long have you been drawing? I don't know. Why? Just asking. They suck. Whatever you say. I, I said to, to Tom at one point, this is a story about a man who can handle anything that anyone could throw at him except a 15-year-old girl. There. I can't eat. I'm pumping adrenaline. And he does not understand teenagers, you know, like, he's looking at her like, what? I don't get it. You know, he's used to talking to the military, you know. 
do you want to live? Do you? Certain things he just doesn't understand how to quite speak with her. So it made for really fun moments. The coolest thing about being in a Tom Cruise movie is literally everything. <laughs> I honestly, I mean, I knew I'd have fun doing this because I'm doing what I love, but like, I'm, I didn't think I would have as much fun as I'm having. I mean, we're just like, every single day on set, you know, we're doing the scenes, but then we're like, we're just goofing off, you know, when we're not filming, we're just having the best time. Tom, he's awesome, I mean, like on set sometimes, like on Mondays, you know, the energy is, you know, kind of low because it's a work uh, weekend, first day back and it's like 6 a.m. We'll come in and be like, guess what guys? We're making a movie. And just like, he just gets people pumped up. It's just, it's fun. But I have learned so much from working with Tom. I mean, he's an excellent teacher. From the beginning, he kind of took me under his wing, I guess you can say. And I came to set a few times when I wasn't working, just so that way, you know, I could, I could watch, you know, the big action scenes, you know, to see the angles and lighting and camera and all of that side of filming, because I don't get to experience that. See how that changes? But he really makes sure that I'm learning firsthand, which is awesome. You know, I'm learning from the best. Fellas. If anything, Reacher is more kick-ass in this movie than he was in the first movie. He's tougher, he does cooler things, there's a higher body count. But at the same time, there are these connections with these two people. Is he all right? Yeah, I think so. Reacher, look here. It's that kind of relationship where, as you're looking at it, you want the audience to yearn for the three of them to be together, to yearn and want for the, you know, Reacher and Sam to be together. The reason why Turner and Reacher are not working is because they're different. I think that Reacher has always respected women. Tom? He's always liked women. I don't think that that's the issue. I think that the issue is him and his personality and him just not being able to you know, commit himself to that kind of life. You know, it's funny. You came here looking for one girl and you ended up with another. Danica, it's been really fun seeing her sort of progress through this movie. And I think that she has these beautiful moments in the film where she gets to be vulnerable. It's really quite tragic because her character in the film really does want him to be her father and really secretly hopes for that. See that woman over there? The waitress who's refilled your coffee three times? That's her. The Samantha Reacher thing, it sort of grows on you. You don't really realize that that's what this whole story is going to be. It just gets deeper and deeper. So that by the end, at least when I've seen it with audiences, it becomes quite emotional. You're just gonna go. That's right. Don't you ever get lonely? Sometimes. When I read the books, I always felt they would make great films. Sometimes. You know, he's a character in the classic sense of who arrives to town, gets drawn into these situations and has to make those decisions, those tough decisions that sometimes for other people they can't make and they can't see it the way that he does. So uh, I think it's really just as an actor, a very fun uh, character to play, challenging to play, and I think enormously entertaining for an audience.